This little boy wants to be a true warrior and go on big adventures, but due to his naive appearance, even his father doesn't find him worthy. However, a magical quest is waiting for this young boy, and it will change his whole life. It all starts in the middle of a deep blue sea. A ship of the legendary Vikings has set out on a journey, but it's not for war. They are running low on food and must catch enough fish to feed the whole tribe. Luckily, they succeed in their task and get ready to return home. However, their leader Halvar is planning something else. He can't control the Viking soul inside him and yearn for fighting, looting, and conquest. All of his mates ask him to calm down, but he doesn't listen. Suddenly, another ship passes by them, and it is owned by Halvar's sworn enemy, Sven the Terrible. Sven loves teasing Halvar and mocks him for turning into a fisherman instead of being a true Viking. Halvar immediately gets angry and calls an attack on Sven's ship. His men reminds what he promised to his wife Ilva. He is supposed to catch fish for the grand tournament banquet. Halvar doesn't listen and proceeds towards the enemy's ship at full speed. Sven's crew fights back and causes serious damage to Halvar's ship. When the two ships collide, a mysterious sword falls on Halvar's ship. Sven asks to return his sword, but Halvar doesn't listen and rushes towards his hometown. He even cut off the fishnet to increase the speed. They succeed in escaping the enemy, but now they don't have any food to bring home. Meanwhile, in their hometown, Halvar's only child, Vic is anxiously waiting for his dad's return. He also wants to become a true warrior like his dad, but for that he needs to win the grand archery competition. Vic makes his own bow and his best friend, Ilvi, brings him an arrow. Suddenly, he hears the crowd cheering for Halvar. He has returned, but his wife isn't happy to see him. Before he says anything, Ilva already knows that Halvar must have lost temper like always and didn't bring the fish. Halvar exaggerates about his fight with Sven and shows Ilva the sword he got. She is not happy with the rusted sword at all and decides to feed cabbage soup at the banquet. Halvar throws away the sword and goes after his wife to beg for forgiveness. Vic notices the sword and befriends the squirrel that seems like the guardian of the mysterious weapon. Later that day, Vic keeps working on his bow. He must make it perfect to win the tournament. Ilva gets worried for her son and advises him not to keep his hopes too high. He doesn't have to become a Viking because his parents will love him for what he really is. However, she can't stop Vic from dreaming because the little guy has dedicated his whole life already. The next day, the whole town gathers to witness the great archery tournament. The winner of the competition will earn the right to sail with the Vikings. Most of the participants fail miserably and get disqualified. Ilvi also tries to get a good shot. Next is Vic's turn. He has made a unique device to throw the arrow. Halvar gets nervous and covers his eyes while Ilva keeps cheering for her son. Before Vic can shoot, an arrow comes from behind the crowd and hits the bullseye. It's the young boy named Leif Erikson, the son of a famous Viking, Eric the Red. He comes forward and requests to join Halvar on his expenditures. Without a second thought, Halvar announces Leif as the winner of the tournament. He doesn't even bother to give Vic a chance. The whole town falls for Leif's exceptional skills and good looks and starts cheering for him. Afterward, they sit down for the grand banquet and Halvar starts exaggerating about his adventures once again. Meanwhile, Vic is busy investigating the mysterious sword. He cleans it and finds a bunch of symbols on the blade. Suddenly, his father asks for the sword and shows it to Leif. The young warrior immediately recognizes the weapon as the magical sword of Odin the King of Lords. It is said to have the power to turn anything into gold, but no one figured out how to use it. Hearing this, Vic mentions the symbols he found. He believes that it is a gesture they need to repeat to make the sword work. Halvar doesn't take his son seriously like always, so Vic has to try the sword himself. He hardly picks up the heavy sword and draws an eight. Then he puts the sword in the ground and snaps his fingers. Something magical happens and a spark shoots out that turns a chicken into pure gold. Seeing this, all the townsmen start fighting over the sword. The magic keeps repeating and turning random things into gold. Halvar wants to try too and grabs the sword. Unfortunately, the spark hits Ilva and turns her into a golden statue. Halvar starts to regret his careless behavior and moans at the loss. Leif has witnessed the whole incident and he believes that there is still a way to save Ilva. In Asgard, the kingdom of Odin, the Lord ordered the making a magic sword. It was entrusted to his son, Loki, and gave him godly powers. Outside Asgard, this sword has the power to turn anything into gold. Loki did not get along with his half-brother, Thor. 
The two sons of Odin were constantly squabbling and fighting. Odin, tired of these disputes, exiled his sons amongst the humans for as long as it would take for them to make peace. Actually, it was Thor who started the fight, but Loki got the blame. Odin took away his powers, he repressed him from using the magical sword, and banished him from Asgard. Nothing's been seen or heard of him ever since. However, on a secret island lies the gate to Asgard. It is the only crossing point between Earth and the world of the gods. Once that gate is opened with the sword, all the powers of the sword will cease and Ilva will return to normal. But this can only be done at the exact moment when the sun is at its highest during summer solstice. It will happen in just four days so they don't have a second to waste and must find the secret island. Moreover, the sea is really rough during this time. This will not be an easy quest. On the brighter side, Leif knows the way to the secret island which was discovered by his father. Vic wants to join too but Halvar refuses immediately because he believes Vic is still a kid. After making all the preparations, the Vikings set out on the sea but Halvar's crew is full of useless idiots. Luckily, Leif is with them. Vic and Ilvi have sneaked into the ship too and keep eye on the surroundings through a hole in the barrel. After a while, Sven's ship passes by them and he notices the gold statue. He immediately stops and asks Halvar to return the magic sword. When Halvar refuses to do that, Sven starts a fight. Firstly, he sends a huge wave of arrows, and then some of his warriors jump in Halvar's ship. Though the crew is not efficient enough, Halvar and Leif are at least great warriors, and they knock down most of the intruders. Unfortunately, Sven finds Vic and Ilvi, and he threatens to kill them if Halvar doesn't return the sword. Halvar gives up, and Sven takes away the sword along with Ilva's statue and Halvar's ship. He also forcefully makes Halvar tell the actual way to use the sword. He is heading towards the pirate island to sell gold while Halvar and his men are thrown on a random island. Halvar puts all the blame on Vic and stops talking to him. Vic wants to apologize and help them with his intelligence but Halvar is not willing to listen to him at all. He even insults Vic's small size and cowardly behavior of hiding in a barrel. Vic gets frustrated by always getting scolded. He finally speaks up and tells his dad that it's all his fault. It is Halvar who never lets Vic take part in expenditures or do anything the other Vikings do. His overprotective nature has made Vic like this. Leif also supports Vic and requests Halvar to give his son a chance. Vic rubs his nose and figures out a plan. They use a tree log as a boat and take off their clothes to make a sail. They head to the pirate island where Sven has already reached. He has lots of debts, but today he can pay all of them with his gold statue. Seeing the pure gold, everyone at the island welcomes Sven and his crew and arranges a luxurious banquet for them. Sven keeps admiring his sword and uses it to turn several more things into gold. He even makes his spiky bully ball into a gold one. All of his men cheer for him and call him the most powerful and kind-hearted. Later that night, Halvor and his crew reach the island as well and follow the spark to find Sven. They can't just head in. They need a proper plan. Vic rubs his nose again and gets a brilliant idea. He notices some costumes and all the Vikings disguise as female dancers. They get inside the hotel and start a gorgeous performance to distract Sven. Halvar is covering his face with a mask and he succeeds in seducing Sven. The stupid pirate falls for the trick and grabs Halvar to have a dance. Meanwhile, Vic sneaks out of the stage to get back his mother's statue. It is taken away by a giant goldsmith who wants to cut down the statue. On the other hand, Halvar manages to steal the magic sword and passes it to his man. He looks around to find his son but Vic is busy dodging the scary goldsmith. Luckily, Halvar reaches there in time and helps his son in defeating the goldsmith. Afterwards they put the statue in their ship and proceeded toward the secret island. Sven follows them too, but Halvar throws the bully ball to damage Sven's ship and slows it down. Leif leads the way, and they will reach their destination any moment. Vic takes a rest but notices the squirrel acting differently around different people. Especially around Leif, the squirrel gets really angry. Vic finds it odd, but Ilvi believes it's just a coincidence. Vic goes to talk to his dad about this, but he changes his mind after hearing Halvar's conversation with the statue. Halvar also admires Leif and wishes that his son was strong and big like Leif instead of Vic who needs to be protected all the time. Vic's heart breaks into a thousand pieces, but he doesn't say a word. Suddenly, Leif alerts everyone of an upcoming danger. It's the water waves called Three Sisters. They are the biggest rogue waves in the world. Halvar scolds Leif for not mentioning the Three Sisters before. Nothing can withstand them, so they all are going to die. They can't turn back either as Sven's ship is right behind them. 
they are badly trapped. Leaf requests Vic to think of a solution, he always has great ideas. Vic starts rubbing his nose and suggests that they should let the three sisters carry them. They can ride their power to close the ice. Halvar believes that it's the most stupid thing he ever heard, but Leaf insists on giving it a try as they don't have any other option. Halvar eventually agrees and instructs his team to sail towards the deadly waves. Leaf seems really confident of this plan, but Vic wonders why Leaf is risking his life for strangers. There's definitely something fishy going on, but Vic has no time for that as the waves are surrounding them from all sides. They try to climb on it but fall down back into the sea. Moreover, huge ice blocks start getting shooted at them. One of them hits Halvar and he falls unconscious. Vic rushes to take his father's place, and he sails the ship. He also guides and encourages the crew like a real chief. After a while, Halvar wakes up and he gets delighted to see his son being so responsible. The journey continues and they get right between the two giant waves. They magically join together to form a narrow path in between the sea. The Vikings have never seen something as marvelous as this. They can literally witness the sea creatures swimming over their heads. The thunderstorm gets worse and a thunderbolt hits the oldest Viking. He doesn't die but his memory is recovered. Now he remembers the whole story of the magic sword. Both Loki and Thor were punished and sent to the earth. They must be finding the gate to Asgard as well. They may be someone near the Vikings. Before they can figure out the whole truth, the last one of the sister waves grab the ship like a claw and throw it in the sky. Everyone fall unconscious and wake up later on the secret island. They are just a few steps away from the gate to Asgard. It lies on the top of a huge cliff that will not be easy to climb, but they don't gave much time. The solstice is near, and the magic sword has to be taken to the gate before that. Halvar entrusted this task to Vic, as it will be easier for him climb because of his low weight. Being small has its own perks. Ilvi takes out her bow and shoots out several arrows on the cliff to form a ladder. Leif lets Vic hold the sword as he doesn't want to steal the kid's glory. Without Vic, this journey would be impossible. Vic starts climbing along with Ilvi and Leif but the arrows can't hold that much weight. Ilvi falls behind while Vic and Leif makes it to the top. Meanwhile, Halvar puts on some pulleys and rope to carry all of his crew and the gold statue to the top of the cliff. Vic and Leif have reached the gate to Asgard already. The solstice is occurring and it's the right time to shine the sword under the sunlight. Leif tells Vic to do it immediately but Vic starts to doubt everything. Leif seems to know way too much and he is more excited even though Ilva is not related to him. When Vic refuses to follow orders, Leif pushes him and the sword falls under the solstice. A huge blast takes place and several gold vines grow out of the sword. Vic is only worried if his mother is cured or not, but Leif has other plans. He walks towards the sword and pulls it out of the stone. His appearance changes and an armor covers his body. Leif is finally in his true form. He is Loki, the son of Odin that was banished to the earth. Odin had put a spell on the magic sword so Loki couldn't touch it. That's why he used the Vikings to fulfill his evil plan. Otherwise he has no sympathy for pathetic human world. He always wanted to make his own world to rule so Odin banished him, but it didn't stop Loki. Halvar reaches there too and can't believe what he is seeing. He asks his son, but Vic doesn't have time explain the whole story. He just advises Halvar not to move too much. Halvar doesn't listen and accidentally touches the gold veins that turn his hand and foot into pure gold. Loki offers Vic to become his partner as he is quite smart, but Vic immediately declines the offer. If being the son of Great Odin means being selfish and cunning like Loki then Vic prefers to be a mere human. He rubs his nose again and recalls the past. He remembers about the squirrel and its weird behavior. It always guarded the sword, hated Leif, and knew how to use a hammer. The squirrel is no other than Loki's half-brother, Thor. Vic throws the squirrel under the solstice and Thor is finally back in his true form. He knew that he would find Loki if he follows the sword. Now it's time to finish their incomplete battle. Thor is totally different from Loki. He not only wants to protect Asgard, he also cares about the humans. After living on Earth for so many years, Thor has started to love humans and will not let Loki harm them. The battle gets intense and Loki drops his sword. Thor instructs Vic to discard the sword as soon as possible. Vic grabs it and throw it in the boiling hot lava. All of Loki's powers are gone, but he doesn't stop fighting Thor. Odin can't see this anymore and arrives to take back his sons. He has realized that Thor wasn't wrong and Loki needs a memorable punishment. He takes both of them back to his kingdom, and the gate to Asgard is closed. 
the volcano can erupt any moment, so Vic and Halvar uses Thor's shield to slide down the mountains. However, Ilva is still a gold statue. Moreover, Sven and Gang reaches there and takes away the statue. Halvar gives up and loses his will to live. Vic can't let this happen. A true Viking never gives up. He encourages his dad because they need Viking fury to break the gold spell. As soon as Halvar gets up again, his hand and foot turn back normal. He fights Sven with all his might and rescues Ilva who is also cured. Afterward, Halvar uses his Viking fury to take the ship out of the island before it explodes. After getting a little far, Halvar finally announces his son as a true Viking. It's time for Vic to take his dad's position as the chief. From now on, he will join all the expenditures and write his own history. You don't always need muscles to defeat your enemy. A smart mind is way more powerful and effective.